you have the drop down it's only selecting the data so i could click that way and it selects the data but really i want the whole table so if i double click here it selects the whole table and then i can drag that to the right which is what i want right i want the whole thing so i'll include the headers in it and as i input the, the the table it should be able to determine what is the header versus the data all right so then we're just going to go to the insert tab we're going to go to the uh, charts group we're going to go to the dots here and then i'm just going to do the standard scatter so there's the scatter i'll pull that over to the right and let's pull this cell to the right a bit and i'm going to go over a bit more and we'll make it a bit larger and so there we have it so let's check this thing out so i'm going to remove the title and so now it's going to be important to kind of list you kind of the axis these titles are very important here because we've got to be determining what did it plot on the x down here versus the y now you can get an idea for this because if i go to the horsepower and i sort it from z to a it's going to 230. so 230 clearly this side uh, the x is the horsepower that's typically how it will be if you sort your data with the x axis on the left and the y on the right in the columns it'll basically automatically then create the scatter plot in the format that you want so then we can then go in here and say let's add uh the axis titles so there's these are going to be important so down here we have the horsepower notice if i click on it i'm not really inside it it doesn't really remove the the title here but if i start typing i can see it's showing up up here so if i type in horse uh power then it then it types in and i believe you can actually use a formula too i could just say this equals the horsepower from there and and then now you have a nice link so if i changed the title name or something it would change so that's probably a, a more efficient way to do this and so i could say this one equals you can see the equal sign up top the miles per gallon and so now we've got uh the miles per gallon so so there we have it pretty straightforward now if i wanted to look at or change the data set i can go into here now if i'm off of this just like all of our other charts i don't have my added tabs up top if i go into the chart now i've got the design and format tabs if i go into the design tab i've got the adding of the elements the axis the axis titles many of these also being shown in that plus button i've got the quick layouts here so we've got the adjustments of the layouts if we wanted to test out these kind of custom layouts we've got the color changes that we can put into play again we have different kind of formats of the layout here if we want to pick those if we want to switch uh the columns uh switch the columns in row and then the select data so i want to select the data and so this one might be a fast way sometimes to to swap the the data uh, over the axes but if i go to the data here we can see uh the data so now we've got the miles per gallon and over here if i go to the edit and go into the edit so we have uh the, the series name if i this is the x and this is the y so the x down here this axis is here so if i select this item i could see what is in the x if i wanted to swap them i can this is one place i can go to sw to switch them if i wanted to switch them i can say this would be the miles per gallon on the x and and then the horsepower on the y but because we put it in this format it pulled it in properly in the proper format so that looks good the x and the y looks like what we would expect uh, and then you have your formatting tools over here as well all right so let's take a look at this side if i go into my plus button i've got the axis i've got the axis titles i've got the the chart title uh and if you have the axes the chart title might not be as important the i mean you could have a chart title but the the most important thing here is that you want to make sure that you're that you're putting the axis titles oftentimes because that's going to tell people what is actually happening whereas in the histogram and you'll have one set of data you might not need the axis titles you could just put the put the uh the the, the chart title 
So if you need the data labels, you can put here. Obviously, if you have a whole lot of data, this is gonna be quite tedious. I'm gonna add it for now, just so we can kind of tie it in uh, to over here, just to check it out. Uh, the error bars, so you could see, again, they, they put the little uh, bar and whiskers here. That would be, could be useful if you don't have a whole lot of data, it would be not as useful if you have a whole lot. Grid lines, uh, the legend, if you have multiple sets of data, then you could put a legend in, but we don't need one because we only have you know, one thing that we're comparing uh, to it, miles per gallon. We have one, I should say, independent variable. And, and then uh, the trend line. Now the trend line is something that's quite common, right? So usually when we do something like this, we're gonna wanna add the trend line. So that puts a, a line, an approximation through the data. Let's, let's get rid of the numbers again. Those numbers, that's too much. Uh, data labels, grid line, get rid of those. Okay, so there's so now we've got this line through the data. Now, oftentimes we're gonna want that line to be a, a little bit more uh, defined. So if I, I go, I could double click on that line or I could go on into the more detail from the plus button and that gives us our our information over here so notice we have a linear line that's usually what we want you can you can test out the the different you know line shapes here that might fit your data more uh precisely and the one of the ideas here of course is to be is to say what i'd like to have is a line that that i can have a function for right i want to have i want to it'd be nice to have a, a line that i can create a a function for that fits the data so that so that then you can do it's easier to do mathematical kind of approximations if you have uh, a line a straight line would be the easiest one but some kind of line that you can have a mathematical equation for would be useful sometimes now sometimes it's nice to actually have the equation so if down here it says display equation so if i go into the equation that gives us our our equation for the line so i'll make that a little bit larger so you can kind of check it out let's go up top and say that I'm gonna, add, I'm gonna increase the size of that thing. So, and obviously again, if we have the equation for the line, then we can kind of try to use that equation to, to make approximations and so on, even though the line is just an approximated line, just basically going through the, the middle of the data to try to look at a trend uh, through it. So if I go into that line again, the other way you can get into that line is hit the plus button. And then in the trends, I got that linear linear line. And I want to open it back up again. So let's actually go down here to more options. So so now I've got that in place. Now if I go to this bucket on the left, sometimes I would like to see that line as a different color quite often. Let's make it red, which will make it stand out. And then uh, is that the color of the line didn't turn red? Let's go to red here on the line and then here we've got the styles of the line i'd like to make it an actual line so now i've got a line instead of the dots so there we have it. that's some of the main items that we would be adding now just to get an idea of this if we have the horsepower here remember this is kind of the independent variable and what you would expect then as the horsepower goes up the miles per gallon goes down, which is kind of what we see here, right? So we're gonna say that as the horsepower, if I sort this from A to Z is low, so lower horsepower between 40 and like 60 over here. So, so horsepower is going up from 40 to 60. If I look at the miles uh, per gallon related to that, we, we start to go down, right? So it's starting to trend down as the horsepower goes up which is kind of what you would expect in general and then as you get the horsepower up to like a hundred then the miles per gallon you know are going down and then as you increase the horsepower the miles per gallon are going down and then when you get way out here to really high horsepower so if i reverse this from uh, z to a and I'm, and I'm looking at like the 230 plot over here, then you can see for, for some reason, the miles per gallon is actually a little bit higher than some of the ones prior to that. And, and you can start to look at something like this and say, well, why would that be the case, for example? I don't really know, 